All right, folks, welcome on back here for another fantastic edition of our weekly workshop simulcast inside our live trading room and across on social media, namely YouTube there, Traders Talk. So great to have all of our students here joining us, Abdul, uh, Margaret, Dave, Alan, Chuck, Margaret, Kathleen, Andrea, all of us just joining us inside our trading room first. And then again, if you're on social media right now, the handle is at CyberTradingU. I'll pop that up on the lower left there that you'll see. Any of our new members joining us on social media today, live or on the recording even, just you know, make sure to hit the like or follow subscribe button right there. It goes a long way for us, but also so you know when we're streaming. We, we do these workshops each and every week, but you know, we simulcast across the uh, market and inside our trading room each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. So with that that said, man, we got a lot to talk about, right? Obviously, on the screen right now, the stock CGC is pushing up pretty nicely. Um, a bunch of trades from earlier this morning that we have the chance to go through. And on top of that, well, I'll tell you what, I mean, the market right now ain't looking too good. <laughs> you know, we pulled back going into E30, 9 o'clock, steady downtrend. We've only continued a little bit there since. Uh, even here, I was elaborating this to our students just in our trading room earlier. As far as like a potential gap long term or mid to long term, like there might be a gap fill here over time. So this could be the beginning of a pullback. The reason I bring this up is because it goes to show, especially on a day like this, that we could easily make money on stocks going up. You know, not every stock is following the S&P or the Dow, uh, ESNQ, whatever you want to focus on as an index or, or major, you know, market mover. So, you know, just before I had CGC up on the screen, I was going to get to this eventually. I, I'm still in, on this trade right now. It's pushing up pretty nicely up to resistance at nine. There are other trades moving though. This one here too, ACB. This one's pushed up still at this point, holding pretty, uh, what do we have from earlier? VVPR, you know, pre-market push. Then after the open, it goes to show that as long as you're working together in a team and you have the chance to, you know, group together, brainstorm together with different stocks. Hell, I'm not watching every stock at, you know, every minute of every day. So I'm always looking at the trading room, seeing myself, Rich, Fausto, and then you know, our students, Andrea, Brad, Kathleen, Grant, Leda, all of our students that have been with CTU for a long time. Well. You know, I know that they make good call outs. It's not just, you know, the stock making a push, but where is there a big level? Where is there a big buyer? Where is there a big seller? So actually, you know, I'll get to some questions that came in just before this workshop started. But I'll tell you what, no webcam today, right? Don't see the webcam popping up, right? I'm a hot mess. Hot mess today. Actually, no longer, but basically without going much further, a small little health scare. Last week, heading into today, I was like freaking out actually this morning overnight. Well, all is well, knocking on wood, but you know, I'm a hot mess. And with that in mind, earlier this morning, I was a lot more worried than I am now, obviously. And I didn't really take the time to prep many charts at all. I didn't take the time to go through my levels. I was too worked up, you know, too, too much going on in my life. Uh, let me ask really quickly, Dave, Margaret, Alan, Abdul, just all of our students in chat right now. You know, hopefully it hasn't happened to you to where there's, there's actually been a major medical issue, right? You know, we pray for everyone's health here. Um, you know, there's always scares, though. Has that happened to anybody of late where, you know, perhaps there was a bit of a scare? You may have had to go to the doctor. You're freaking out mentally. And it's throwing your psyche off with trading. Throws your psyche off from trading, right? A lot of us, right? Bill, wishing you well, my friend, and all of us, of course. You know, Margaret, Scott. So I knew I wasn't alone with that, like kind of generally, everyone kind of goes through different issues. But when it comes to risking money, when it comes to making intelligent decisions with our money, well, what do we do? Well, unfortunately, we're going to be a little bit more reluctant to take trades because we know that things are off, right? Whether, you know, they're actually happening or it's a scare, you know, thankfully all as well. But it's to say that there's always going to be something that could throw you off. And in, in that case, I'm not going to be as keen to just jump in a trade to jump in a trade. So to stick on VVPR for a moment, I will tell you, I was watching this with my student Manny earlier on a coaching call and it is popped. And I was looking for a pullback right down to this line, right in this moment here at the time. And it just did not make that stupid under and over and it's not so stupid mind you but you know i'm a stickler to my rule set and again i'll take a trade when i feel most confident about taking it especially on a day where my psyche is off where i have a lot going on things just kind of boggling in my mind so this i was looking for an entry it just did not do exactly 
what I wanted it to do in accordance to my strategy. And it just took off without me. So that's like an even further, you know, kick in the, you know, what? Like that's a real big like tease right there. This thing flew without me. All right. What do we do? It's like, shit, what do we do right now? This thing is running up without me now. It's even worse. All right. Well, it's, you know what? Pretty much rinse and repeat. It's a matter of saying, hey, like, you know, is there another stock that maybe isn't up, you know, a thousand percent or let alone a hundred fifty percent at the time, 200 percent now, 277 percent live right now. Well, if there is a stock that's only up 30 percent, 20 percent, 40 percent compared to this. All right. Perhaps there's more ground to cover. Right now. Hey, really quick. Does that make sense to everybody there? Just that simple like train of thought. You know, this is up so much in pre-market, not just the trend, but percentage wise, you got to imagine at some point this is going to pull back. So you would figure it's probably just best to move on, right? Like figure out a stock that's maybe not up as much, right? So that's where I'm looking around elsewhere. I jump off my coaching call with my student Manny at the time at 8.30, log into the trading room. And you know, we were looking at this AINC beforehand, before we had jumped off. You could see right here, I had a level at $4. Uh, there was an even better level on this at 380. But point being, what I did on this trade at least was I waited, I waited a decent chunk and you know, it ended up making a nice move here where it pushed above $4. I did survive this shake as it pulled back. Nasty little shake there, but it ended up failing to break a lower low and making that nice little push back the next candle. So easy to say, but that did help me out where it pushed off the level and it made the better move afterwards in pre-market. So, you know, it's a matter of seeing, hey, just $4, you'd figure to be a whole number level, but not just that. And it did hold pretty nicely at first in pre-market, but the more times that we see buying from that level, I'd imagine something's got to give, right? Again, my popsicle stick reference, as I phrase it in class, uh, you know, just let's say you have that popsicle stick in between your fingers, you're twisting it, you're bending it, you're flicking it, you're snapping it. You're probably not going to break it in one shot, but you know, the more that you snap it and twist it and whatever, you're weakening it, aren't you? Okay. Same to be said with just any horizontal price level. I, I mean, honestly, any sort of level, whether it's a moving average or VWAP line or you know, trend line even. So here, just at $4 horizontal price level, the first break here, it was lackluster. It pushed up a little bit, but then it came back down. You know, It failed to make that big move shortly after. So the more times it can at least nip this on the way up, there's a better chance for that better push. So I was more diligent here waiting for this push. Uh, I, I failed to get in from 380. I wish I could say I did that. I know a couple of our students, maybe Chuck or Alex got in there from 380. Uh, more or less, once it broke above four again, I took my entry from there, led to still a pretty solid run, right? I ended up getting out as right around 429, 430 even. Um, Abdul says, do you have a hard time getting filled in pre-market? Very good question there that I can just kind of segue towards. Yes, and it depends on a couple of things, right? Uh, let's say right now, not pre-market, let's say right now even, just real time, like 11.30 in the morning, 11.15 in the morning. Uh, for this stock, AINC, is it even moving well? Nah, not really. Uh, how many shares would you trade at the stock for all of us here live? Maybe 100 shares, maybe 200 shares, 500,000. How many shares would you look to trade at the stock right now? The reason I ask is because, you know, for a stock that has a thinner order book and larger spread, it's going to be a lot harder to get filled in general, regardless of size, whether it's 200 sh shares or 1,000 shares. Uh, so with saying that, you know, it's a matter of, hey, on larger share size, plus being on a thinner order book, that's where it's going to be even that much tougher, right? So in pre-market, you're going to see this type of order book more often compared to, you know, much tighter spread, better liquidity out there. Leonard says, thinner the volume, lower the shares. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not to say that you're not going to get filled. It's not to say you're always going to get partially filled. No, it actually happens pretty infrequent to me in times. Or, or I should say, hold on, that's it, I came off wrong. You know, much less often than not, it, it happens to me. So it's not as often. But it's been known to happen, especially on just stocks that have this type of liquidity, though. It's kind of why I harp to you so often, at least focus on stocks that have better order books, tighter spreads. 
All right. So, you know, to at least go back as far as the whole concept of, all right, well, your psyche's off. There's obviously something, you know, messing with your head, whatever it may be, work, health, family, friends, uh, even trading. Let's say you got your ass kicked the day before and you're still kind of, you know, feeling pretty down about that, throwing you off. What do you do? It's a matter of being more restrictive with your strategy and saying, okay, as long as the stock is making you know, a perfect move where it's testing a significant resistance on the way up, or on the flip side, if it broke above resistance already and ran off of it, then perhaps that resistance could initially look to become support. So, you know, furthermore, when the market opens up and you have the chance to put your seatbelt on a lot easier to, you know, set stops on trades it's going to be easier for you to take entries, right? So in pre-market, I still wasn't fully focused. Uh, the AINC trade got me a small profit, but even that took a little while to get going. You know, I missed out on the huge pop on VVPR, so I still felt a little like, you know, not uh, discouraged really, that's not the word to use, but it's to say I missed out on a huge opportunity. So, you know, I still got to realize, you know, there, there's going to be other trades out there, but I want to make sure that it matches what I'm looking for in strategy. That's it. Uh, even this, it's easy to say this in hindsight, you know, after a stock like this shakes down as nasty as it does, we just move on from it pretty much, write it off. But this resistance line at 560 did flip into support at first, didn't it? <laughs> So if you did have that level set up and you were hyper focused on this trade as it was you know pulling back at least you know at the time it was approaching that support you could say all right well what if it ends up testing it goes under then over it's the first time it's testing it right where my cursor is that to me is like a really sound setup you know perhaps more of a captain hindsight comment looking at what had happened you know it actually bounced back up pretty nice you had a good chance to make some you know you know, decent money. It didn't continue, obviously. It didn't make the higher high, but it was a good day trade. You know, it was a good little bounce off support, right? Now, though, hey, what about other trades that we were calling out from earlier today? Well, really, after the market opened, I, I was taking some losses and some break evens. TPST was one of the trades that I was more focused on at first, uh, you know, kind of going back to at least, you know, stocks that you're more prepared for. I didn't have these lines set actually from earlier today or, or from this morning rather. I had that from, I had these lines from yesterday. So these were actually saved overnight from a class I taught yesterday afternoon. You know, for all my students like Abdul, uh, who else do we have here that's gold or platinum? Scott, Dave, Lee, Alan, Bill, Roger, Alex. You know, you, know, you were with me in the phase two class yesterday. So we were talking about a couple of different levels. Point being, you know, this TPST trade at 541 did not hold support here too nicely. It tried, I jumped in, it stopped me out. I tried again, it took me out break even here. Actually, it was afterwards, it pulled back and I, I washed out profits at this point. So break even here, but still didn't make the higher high that I wanted, right? It happens, right? But at that point, I'm not just going to jump into other trades. Just to jump into, let's kind of Go back to the drawing board for a quick second. Rescan the market, mind you. Actually, a little housekeeping note. You might see my gainers list here kind of all out of sorts. Uh, that's a little glitch on my platform today. I'm using Benzinga Pro scanners as always, just kind of on the side here anyway. But, you know, I, I'm always scanning throughout my day and in my morning. I'm jumping on a coaching call with one of my students at 1030. And, you know, at that point, you know, I had to reschedule actually with my student. You know, he had grandchildren coming in. Of course, family comes first. And we, I told him, like, let's just reschedule. I think it's best for you, you know. Uh, but with that in mind, I'm going back to the drawing board. What's next? And I'm seeing ACB. This is where we go back to ACB. This is where we go to CGC. And this moved up a little bit higher since. That's fine. I was kind of expecting it to, to a degree. But look at this resistance here. It was holding under this area for so long, right? And this is after 1030, like I'd said. But it was holding under that level for quite some time, right? It's easy to see. I think it's very easy to see that. It's not just one little flash pop, one little peak. No, no, no. It's holding under that area or maybe even just that one price level. What is that? 482, 481 maybe for like 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Now, the question begs why how and otherwise where was the actual big volume filled because our whole mantra here at ctu is to follow the big money you know not only is that a big level maybe on this one minute chart but 
It does show at least on the daily chart too. Mm, a little higher, 492, 495-ish right there, a few days in a row where we had those tops. But where actually was the big volume? That's like the larger question on my mind. Now, I had enough time here just across the last 20 minutes prior. I jumped on my coaching call with my student. And, you know, I saw right here, I'm like, wow, you got some big volume filled at 10.07 in the morning. You know, it's big buying, clearly, big green spike. So at what price? That's the question. Well, I'm going to ask you, what price? Oh, man, this is moving up nice here. That's good. Uh, give me a second here. Give me a second here. Give me a second here. ECB. All right, there we go. Uh, let's just do a little bit of that. There we go. Now, there's only one part of this heat map or this whole window. Actually, it's not on the actual heat map portion of it, believe it or not. That's my hint I'll give you. But, you know, if there's a price level that sticks out that has, you know, big green spike, big buying off of it, what price would you happen to see that be at? Again, it's not on the actual heat map portion of this, but what do we got? Phil quick to the punch on 477. Margaret saying 472. Both good answers when you look at this column CVP because both actually stick out nice. Now, this is where I'll show you. Look at the column to the right of that, though. Delta. Delta. Actually shows the difference between the red and the green on that candle, believe it or not, or on that price level. So it certainly seems as if at 477, we have a lot more green than red, do we, right? Now, I could really dig into the old-fashioned tape here for you if you want. But, you know, for right now, we'll just kind of keep it simple. And I'll put a line at 477, namely here. And more or less, just the more times it can nip that price, you'd like to figure it can make a big move shortly after. You know, if we have so much buying there and it keeps testing that price on the way up, I'd like to think at least we should get some more decisive reaction than maybe this is like four pennies on the way up, three pennies on the way down. If there is that much, you know, volume filled at that price in general, let alone buying, you'd figure the move should be up and we should at least see it hold above that price as support. So that's where I ended up taking this trade on ACB. I got out as like we were starting traders talk as I did at like at 511, 510. Now, that's because my other trades after the market opened kind of sucked. <laughs> I took losses and break evens. I went nowhere after 930. I actually gave back most of my profits, you know, from, from the AINC trade. That was a nice one that held me above water at least. This, well, this definitely takes me at least back into the profit, if not a lot more. And then now at this stage, I still have the CGC. Now the difference, or rather, pardon me, the similarities between CGC and ACB are both are within the same sector. The reason I'm trading both are because I'm familiar with both. You know, when, when one moves, the other tend to, tends to move. So that's where, at least for right now, it's actually trying to hold support. Got to be a little mindful of a break here coming up live. Already just kind of nipped under this here at like 873. Yeah, it's pulling back. It might be time to get out on this trade here too. Let's see. 33,000 share print got filled at 855. Give this just a little bit. I don't mind hanging on for a split second longer right now. We're still above water here on this trade. Uh, yeah, had some resistance here at 848. Perhaps that could be support as low as. Yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll move my stop up on this trade now. Just to basically like 845, 844 even. If it stops me out, I take the money, so be it. But that's where we take the money and run on one, and we try to keep the other just in case if it can make a better move. It started to, but now at this point, we got to manage it, manage it a little bit tighter, and we'll look to see if this could become support and for this to move back up. All right. Uh, Alex says, is your audio disrupted? I don't believe so. Audio should be good, folks. Let me know. 
I got your question just in private chat, Alex. So we'll get to your question just a bit. A couple in, in the main chat as well. All good from everybody else. And Alex, you were good to go too. Nice. All right, Alex said he fixed this issue. All right, uh, really quick, let me scroll up. I got some chat that came in from earlier. I just want to make sure I can get to first. All right, so how about this? We got two different Abdul Ks. How about this? There we go. Nice. So we have our gold student Abdul who had asked that earlier and our new trial member Abdul here just mentioning, could you please recommend any strategies or content to me to master book map for scalping? Okay. So, you know, book map in general, might I say, and, and I mean this, like, you know, we put out some good content ourselves on our YouTube channel here at CTU, you know, like for free. I, you know, Bookmap themselves has a great channel. Fausto and myself are both on there at times to do different webinars with them. And they have other you know presenters that you could like poke at. I, I never like to mix and match strategies too much. So that's the one thing I'll say there. Like, don't like just like kind of use one, like all these different people's strategies. But it's just the overall concept of how to use Bookmap altogether. Now, that's where I'll tell you, though. In our classes, in our like main curriculum that we provide, like after your trial membership with CTU, if you want to become an actual student, join us in the phase one stock course. Uh, I just came off a of class yesterday, folks, so I'm still kind of in class mode here. I got my PowerPoint, but you know, actually, right here, if you see Abdul, our trial trial member here, uh, phase one at the bottom, class twelve, intro to quote unquote level four. That right there is what we you know nickname book map so that's a whole 60 minute like detailed class that i do in our beginner course the phase one where i tend to go over just how to use the basic principles of it uh the heat map all the other columns namely the delta column i even try and hide uh not to like hide any information but you know just really quick note if you're on think or swim you know you have a lot of these tools to your arsenal i don't think that you can get that delta column perhaps but outside of that all of these other tools here that you could use all right so you know if you have further questions on book map altogether that's where i'd say just you know you could private chat myself abdul or you could email me on top uh you know after this workshop later on today and i'll be more than happy to at least address any other questions that you got there All right, so we jumped to private chat next from my, from my man, Alex. So uh, he says, Fausto had a tip this morning. He said three simple tops, or three, I'm sorry, he said three triple tops, geez, my dyslexia there, uh, if not moving up closely to drop, can you confirm that I heard him right? Thanks. All right, so let's repeat that again. I have bad reading skills. <laughs> Fausto had a tip this morning. He said three triple tops, if not moving up, likely to drop. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing as saying, you know, the 30 second rule. It's the same thing as saying if it's not going to make a big move in one direction, it's going to make a big move just the opposite way, right? It's the same exact concept. That's all. You know, that's literally it. Uh, it's the whole reason behind CGC making a stronger push over time. Even on this trade here, my entry on this stock was off of 832, 831-ish even. That was a strong iceberg level from earlier this morning. So it was this area. It was this area altogether. That's what it was. So for myself on this trade, there was a bit of an iceberg level here since the market opened up at 836. It got filled on the way up, so you know green, and then we also had some big green here at eight thirty three you know that's my price where I got in from on this trade, so you know it took a moment of time before it ended up making the better push, but you know more or less, if it wasn't going to hold support, then it's more likely to pull back if it's not going to keep its foot on the gas pedal in terms of trend in terms of buying, even just before. You know, I, I had to, you know, manage my trade here at this point and say, oh, shoot, if this ends up failing to, you know, flip this into support, this pretty strong chart level here I have, you know, it's not just the tippy top that we focus on. It's more of the consistent one, two, three bars right there, four, five, six right there. You know, that's, that's pretty solid. That's a solid chart top. So, I, you know, to kind of just jump back, that's where I see even here, like, hey, if this wasn't going to move back up, I'm still not out of the, the weeds necessarily. You know, I'm going to profit on this trade regardless if it does pull back more. But, you know, it's just if it failed to push back up here, 
it's not going to be a surprise to see it dump back down. It's not to say every single stock makes a full-fledged reversal, mind you, but do we want to give back all of our profits? No. Did I want to give back my profits earlier on TPST? Hell no. <laughs> but better to get out with zero profit and a break-even trade compared to hanging on to a big fat loser over time, hoping and like, ah. So, you know, to even sim simplify it just to like, you know, what you had said, you know, that if there's a triple top, that's a pretty strong level, right? Uh, again, once more, CGC, like you could just use this. Now, I will mention that the time in between this test here, what was this at? 8 or 10.04, 10.03. And this level test here at 10.43, there's a lot of time in between that. What you want to focus on, and this is where we teach this a lot further in our actual classes, but the more times it tests it in a shorter concentration, that's where I feel bullish. The more times in a shorter concentration. So when you think about that, it ended up beginning its better push from this level. At this point, I was already in the trade from the 833, 835-ish 830, know, area. But you know, from this level, it provided a great entry even from here. It just took an extra nudge. That's because you know, just it was testing it more frequent in the shorter time zone. All right. Uh, let's see. Really quick again from Alex, just um, asking pre-market how to trade when stops are not allowed. That's also a very good question. And again, I'm not just pulling this back up just to be in class mode right now. It's just on the top of my mind at least. But hey, phase two, when you graduate from phase one and move on to the phase two course, you know, I do a lot more live market. Uh, you know, I know this is kind of live market to a degree, traders talk here, uh, but I'm not like really doing X's and O's as much as I do in, in actual curriculum. But, you know, this is where in phase two, I have a whole class devoted to pre-market class eight intro to pre-market right here. So that's the full 60 minute breakdown on that. More or less when you're using uh or when you're trading pre-market, you can't use stop orders. That's where you'd have to make sure that you're only using a limit order first, but your price level is set a little bit, I'm sorry, your, your limit price is set a little bit lower compared to where the stock is trading at. So like even here, let's pretend this was pre-market here. Let's pretend this is pre-market. Uh, make sure my that's to limit. All right, so if I wasn't able to set a stop here, let's say this is pre-market, and of course we know you can't trade market orders in pre-market, you can't set stop orders there, uh, options market is not open, you can't buy your puts or calls there yet. All right, well here, what you wanna do is to manage this trade to make sure it could hold above 848 as support. Well, you'd probably set like a limit price, let's say like, nah, not that low. 828, maybe even 836, something like that. And just have your finger on the sell button. That's as much as you could do in terms of, you know, doing what you would call a manual stop. This is where I tell you for anyone that like is trading pre-market, please make sure two things, uh, you know, you're, that, that you're trading a stock that has a more liquid order book first, because with something like this, it's a little bit easier to manage. At least it gives you a little bit more to focus on in terms of liquidity. And normally for a stock that is more liquid, it's not going to move as fast comparative to otherwise. It's not going to move as chaotic compared to otherwise. So I'm just giving you my thoughts here. And it comes from being you know, with CTU for 10 years, teaching our classes and being a professional trader myself. But everyone has a different cup of tea, and I don't mean this in a negative way as much, but it is true. You know, there are some folks here that that have a more like, you know, riskier personality where they look to take trades on like crazy spreads. I don't want most students to be doing that because more often than not, they lose on those stocks. I mean, that's kind of why we, we say that there's like a 90% failure rate, rate in trading, right? So with saying that, the reason is because people aren't as focused as much on the strategy and focusing in on liquidity. So for a stock that has a bigger spread, there's more uncertainty behind it. And typically when you're trading pre-market, at least after eight o'clock, the order book fills in a lot more. After even seven o'clock, there's a chance because some pre-market brokers open up their, their trading uh, to, to retailers at like seven o'clock. All right, maybe there's something at like 7.15, 7.30. There is. 
There could be. But when you're out there at like five in the morning, four, there is no need for that. You know, I, the only people I, I actually coach on how to trade at that time are people that are like international overseas in Europe. You know, if they're in Belgium or Germany, I, I got off with a student just yesterday, uh, you know, that lives in Germany here. And, you know, hey, you're more in the zone because you're not wiping the crust from your eyes that early in the morning. You know, it's probably like late morning, early afternoon for you then. And you're in the zone. You're like, you're me right now, you know? So that's where I tell you here that you're a little bit easier to, to focus on at that time to trade for pre-market. But even as such, if our whole philosophy is to focus on the big money and there's not nearly as much big money out there at that time, or even a seven o'clock or at times even eight o'clock, you know, not every stock has a good order book then then it's best to just kind of be more observant, wait, trade smaller size, anything, you know, you could play around, you know, you could, you know, trade that crazy spread stock, but just do it really for fun. That doesn't mean that's high risk. If you're trading it on 10 shares, <laughs> you know, you know, if you're doing it on small size, that just means that you're doing it for fun. And that's okay, because you know that you're not going to lose big. So that could be one way to kind of wean yourself into, you know, being more comfortable with pre-market trading, just to trade a lot smaller size at first, knowing that you can't really set stops altogether. All right. So current time, 1137. I want to make sure that we have a uh, chance to go through some emails and then some other trades just from earlier today, from yesterday. All right. So uh, question from... Question from uh, one of our new trial members. You know, thank you for your email. Do you happen to use Bookmap? There we go. We did answer that just before. If so, what is the best setup for? Uh, they say TS. I count that as TradeStation, the broker, which is what I use here. That's what you're looking at. But maybe they mean Thinkorswim, TOS. From Ovidio, if I if I have if I have that right, you know, just let me know if TradeStation or Thinkorswim, TS they had said, but you know, more or less, basically TradeStation here. We actually have like files, templates we could email out to you. Um, you know, Thinkorswim has Bookmap, and I would just say contact Bookmap, or I'm sorry, wrong, contact Think or Swim, contact your broker there, and ask about Bookmap. Then in that case, and they'll be able to discuss that with you. Um, we'll help you at, once you become a student, really, and once you begin to go through our classes, we give you as much handholding as possible when you first join us and get you set up on two introductory calls with my with my colleague Rich, and then from there, like three real coaching sessions one-on-one -on -one, where we have the chance to go over trades that you've taken, uh, go over trades that we're watching together privately. So you know that's where I have a better chance to kind of break down think or swim trade station altogether, either broker. But basically book map, if you want to just kind of like a quick little instance of this here, I don't mind just kind of going over one or two things right now, even like on CGC. Uh, you could just see here this is beginning to pull back. Seems like the 569 level might be trying to hold his resistance right now. It's chopping around it. This was an iceberg resistance from earlier. It broke under it just before. Support got broken through, so support should be resistance at first here. No surprise. Now, question is, is it going to flip it and pop again, or is it just going to pull back? You know, that's my risk that I'm running right now. You know, I'm in from 833, 834, I think. Uh, you know, if it just breaks lower, I'll get stopped out, and so be it. I'll just take smaller profit on the remaining part. But uh you know, now at this point, it's just like if this could hold here and get back above this line, then there's a, a stronger fighting chance for this trade to make a better push later on today. Let me ask you right now in the event where this stock ends up making a pop, makes a, a new high of the day, you know, makes a new move up, what's our major resistance up top? What is our major resistance up top? for all of our students here in chat and, and our trial members here. When I say that, notice I'm, I'm talking singular, not plural. So there is only one price I want you to answer. Should be an easy one. All of us answering it though in chat already. A perfect 10, right? So, you know, $10, that area, of course, we'll zoom in on it, get you in the actual like, you know, area there. But 10 seems to be resistance, right? Now, here, though, this is where things get interesting. Notice that we had an iceberg order that was like on the sell side all morning here at 941. 
941. It was about 40,000 shares. Now, I wouldn't really respect that line too much since it got pulled, but how long was it out there for? Nearly an hour and a half. So that's a long time in this day trading world that we live in. It's a long ass time. I mean that. You know, 30 minutes is a long time. Why was that order out there? Why? Now, I, I don't have that answer. You don't have that answer. Don't even try and fathom. Like, just, we got to put ourselves in the shoes of a four year old at times, a five year old. Got my, uh, got my lovely nieces, Hannah and Eliza. And, uh, you know, they're, they're growing into those, that age, age range right now. You know, why, uh, you know, just kind of that curious mind, right? All right. Well, you know, we got to put ourselves in those shoes. Hannah and Eliza shoes. So, you know, why? Why is this order out there for so long? Well, the more this pushes up, and if this could pop, I will still treat this as potential resistance. I will. Now, technically, there's still about 15,000 shares out there, like in between, I guess, like, you know, kind of here. Doesn't like look too distinct, but at like 934 ish, 933 ish. So, you know, if this pops, you know, maybe this area in general could act as resistance. Let me ask us really quick. It's below ten dollars, so I'll still call it a you know relatively cheap stock. What common set of price levels should we normally focus on anyway for a you know relatively cheaper stock? You know, in terms of looking for icebergs, what common set of intervals and you know price levels should we just normally be focused on anyway with right? 50 cent level says Sam and then Scott whole number levels too. So, you know, that's why we got 10 up top, $10, right? But, you know, as far as like, Hey, you got this line at nine forty on the nose, nine forty, It is. Well, respect that. Maybe, I don't know, 15 K here. Maybe. Well, maybe at nine fifty. there's 18,000, 19,000 there. So it's more or less for me to say that it's not like $10 is just the only resistance level there. Uh, there's going to be an area, I believe, that this will hit resistance if this decides to pop. If this just pulls back, then so be it, right? Now, the key word in, in those two phrases I just said, the first word there, I said it two times, if, right? Remember how I always say trading is conditional. So if the foot's taken off the gas pedal on this run and this does break a lower low, all right, I get stopped out. I'm out of the trade and so be it. Take my money. But if it's not going to make this higher low and this better pop up soon enough, it's like pulling back now as we're talking. If this breaks lower, then odds are it's going to keep dropping. So there's no guarantees with trading altogether. Let's see if this could hold over time. In the event that it does, Perhaps there is a case that it will move up higher later on. We'll come back to it probably during our afternoon meeting at 2.30. But more or less, I would still treat this as a resistance in between from here up towards 10. All right. So I'll tell you what, that kind of answered that question from my trial member there briefly. Like I wanted to give you a little something there, right? But otherwise from A to Z up and down, like honestly, you can like try and go through these traders talks as much as humanly possible, but you're probably going to put in way more effort learning uh, via traders talks than you would honestly going through our organized full classes. So, you know, in the phase one class, again, I, I went over that just even a week ago or two for everyone live there, intro to level four. Um, oh, okay. Here we go. This is a good one. Uh, this is one from my student, Matt. Okay. Josh, with the Bitcoin having coming up, just wanted to get your thoughts just on what's ahead. And as far as if there's going to be a, a very good buying opportunity on the miners. Uh, yes. And it's more or less for me to say that the mining companies are not going to be as direct with Bitcoin's move. We noticed that a month ago. So, you know, with like stocks like CLSK, I mean, Bitcoin took a huge hit overnight, so we had a nice pullback on Bitcoin. Maybe I'll show you that graph in a bit. But hey, CLSK definitely reacting with Bitcoin with that down drop here today. It's more or less to say like a, a month ago, 
this had a nasty pullback or a few weeks ago, nasty pullback. And Bitcoin was holding. Bitcoin was perfect. It was moving up higher over time. So that's where it leaves a bad taste in your mouth to try and expect strong correlation, very strong correlation. Uh, on a stronger move on Bitcoin, you should expect at least a decent reaction with it. But at least from a month ago or a few weeks back, it's going to lead me to say, if you're going to try and focus on Bitcoin, I would say buy Bitcoin or otherwise, if you're not going to buy Bitcoin, uh, Coinbase likely will have a better correlation with Bitcoin. Otherwise, just go to the ETFs, IBIT. Uh, let me just show you right now, IBIT, BlackRock Bitcoin ETF. And I'll compare this actually with the Bitcoin graph I have up live right now. It's a five minute chart. Let me go to one minute. Is this delayed? Nah, it's live. Okay, good. Um, 9.30. Yeah, looks pretty similar to me. Look at that move. You could generally see this is a very strongly correlated move, these two, right? Now, to anyone in the know, this should be no surprise, right? And just BlackRock owns, I don't even know the number, but in the 30s of thousands, I'd imagine, if not much more in terms of actual Bitcoin. So... You know, they're probably going to acquire more and more over time, more and more funds pouring into these ETFs altogether. So that's where you're going to see some good relation between Bitcoin itself and these ETFs. IBIT is the one that I focus on, though. So at least this is still not too expensive. It's a good one to definitely try and you know look for on, on a swing trade long term. All right. But, you know, Bitcoin altogether. Yeah, we're going to pull back. No surprise. And here's my thoughts on this. Really, it's no surprise to me. So. Anyone ever hear the, the phrase in our trading room? If you're not familiar with crypto, it is A-OK. -okay, but for anyone in our trading room, if you're ever familiar with the phrase, buy the rumor, sell the news, right? Now, that's not going to happen here in crypto. You're not going to have like a bear market. It's not going to drop like all the way back down. And that's my strong belief. I'd be shocked if that were to happen. That's not going to happen here. But in terms of this Bitcoin having event happening uh, in two weeks, in like 13 days, I guess it is, right? Going to 13 days. My thought at least was, well, you're probably going to have pe some people sell off to try and shake like all the newbies out, all the people that like just expect it to per pop up perfectly once this big Bitcoin event happens, this having event. So... You know, you can go back. It did pop up pretty quickly after each previous halving event. There's been like three or four in the past, you know, 12 years. So that's where like cyclically it leads to a very strong bull market. So I'm long term on this. You know that. But that's where at least short term, very short term, immediate term, when this Bitcoin halving event happens, it would not shock me to have this pull back, try and do like a false break of support to stop a bunch of people out, probably sweep out a ton of liquidity on the buy side. People look like real jerks knowing that they you know, got their orders liquidated. Uh, people that look like real you know, greedy jerks knowing that they bought at the very top. And then after that drop, big squeeze up. That's my prediction. I don't know if I'll be right or wrong on that, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So, you know, I've been buying over time really since mid to late January when I told you off of like 39.5 here. It broke under and over that exact price and bam. Well, now at this point, you see a distinct lower high on the Bitcoin daily chart, right? Lower high. All right. Well, lower high might equate to a double bottom at least, maybe a test of support again. So I think I have these up just from my like previous like kind of research here, my my charting. Just kind of this bottom here first, this candle, then this one held. So around sixty thousand could be a nice support level to watch out for, as low as uh, it's at sixty five now. So you know maybe even by the end of this week we could see it make that test. Um, you know it's a pretty strong drop today. So if it's not going to try and make that higher high it's more likely to try and retest the support, right? So that's all I'm focused on there for the time being. And that would kind of align up with that whole halving event happening within the next few weeks or a couple of weeks. I think probably it'd be about like six weeks, in my opinion, before you get that real rally that everyone would expect, six to eight weeks. 
All right. So I will tell you, folks, uh, that's all I got as far as emails or chat. So if there are any other questions or stocks you'd want me to look at here before we finish up, let me know. Unfortunately, I just see what I saw here in bottom right. Got taken out. Got stopped out on CGC here. So if this ends up popping back up for us just afterwards, I'll try and jump back in if it looks good. I have no need to just yet. So right now, it seems like this is pulling back now at this stage. You know, maybe if it makes one more push later on, we'll focus on it. But at least for the time being, it was a decent move. ACB even here, this stock, the other like pot stock we were talking about, uh, you know, just more or less new iceberg seller popping up here at 525. So in accordance to CGC dropping back a little bit, wouldn't shock me if we end up getting more of a pullback over time on this one here. Bouncing back up for now. That's fine. We'll see if this ends up holding support coming up later on. If so, then we'll try and look for that 940-ish area. If not, then so be it. That's kind of my thought. All right, folks. Again, last call. If there's anything else looking good, up, down, left, right, that you'd want me to look at here, call out just before we finish up. Uh, VVPR, this thing's done. Oh, Irene, this was a nice trade from yesterday. Nice little push. Had some huge volume filled at 625 and at 635 for this trade. It was more like throughout the morning that it, that it ended up running. But going into the afternoon, we ended up seeing big volume traded at those two prices. Well, I wonder why. Look what happened just early in the morning. It pulled back below those levels. Uh, they were red to begin with. So we would nickname red as selling. Maybe somebody knew. And, you know, with that in mind, this is a Bitcoin stock also. So the overnight drop on, on Bitcoin, this miner ended up pulling back quite a bit. You know, more and more selling came into the afternoon, but perhaps it was the calm before the storm. Didn't even come close to this as resistance, but I'd expect this to, to hold as a top here over time. You know, kind of went up towards 620-ish, 621, and then just made that pullback. All right. So folks, hey, we're going to finish up for the time being. I'm going to jump on to a couple more coaching calls one-on-one -on -one throughout my afternoon, 12 o'clock, 1230, one actually throughout my day. I'll be back on the stick here at 230 Eastern for the afternoon meeting. And then, uh, you know, at least from there, we got the full afternoon heading into the close all together. So for all of us on YouTube, Facebook Live, all of us on top, you know, a couple things. First and foremost, I appreciate everyone just joining us all together here each and every uh, Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock. Just if you're interested in continuing a couple of options, if you're not followed or subscribed to our YouTube our YouTube channel just yet. Just uh, bottom left right there is still sticking up at Cyber Trading U. Just make sure to follow us on YouTube, namely. That's where we're hosting all of our education and videos alike. But if you're interested in taking the next step, joining us inside our live trading room with our students, Brad, Kathleen, John, Grant, Michael, everyone there right now, uh, just scan that QR code on the top left with your phone, with your camera. If you're not as fancy with your phone or your camera, no sweat actually scrolling on the bottom right there. You got the old fashioned hyperlink there, uh, ctu.co forward slash trial. You could just type that in there on your address bar. It takes you to, to a nice landing page, gets you signed up for a week long trial to our live trading room. But that is where we'll continue our commentary, at least throughout the duration of this day. So, you know, for all of us there live, I'll be back on the stick, like I'd said, just this afternoon at 2.30 and we'll talk from then. Take care.